Hello y'all. I am back again for another video and I just want to begin this video with a disclaimer. If you are extra sensitive about death, if you've had a loved one or friend or neighbor that's been killed, it may not be the right time for you to hear this video. However, I highly suggest that even if you have had someone that's recently been killed, I highly suggest that you listen to this video because it may help you grieve and process things from a logical point of view, not just emotional, because death within itself is very emotional. However, I am going to go into some details on this video to help you. So the truth of why they got killed. And this is a hard one to do y'all. I mean, a hard one, but I have some experience. I've seen some things and I'm going through some things. So the truth of why they got killed. Okay. So let me first point this out. Most of this video will not apply to children. Anyone that's been killed, that's, I would say 21 and under. This won't apply as much. However, in areas where it may apply to them, I will point that out. So, and the reason I want to say that is this. 21 and under, 18 and under, those are children. So those are the Lord's angels, okay? It goes back to the majority of children will enter heaven, especially younger children. So this video is going to apply mostly to people that have lived some of their life. So like, for example, Jeremy Brown, he was just killed by a lady, Carlicia Hood and her son. It was self-defense. Jeremy Brown had a history of abusing women and he just was recently killed. I uploaded a video called The Narcissist Last Time. So if you want to know more about that, you can go to that video. So Jeremy Brown would be a clear example of the truth of why they were killed. The truth of why he was killed is despite what people may think, despite his enablers, Jeremy Brown was not a good guy when it came to women. There may have been some women he didn't hit. However, he violated his own mom. He was hitting his mom. He assaulted his mom. So disobedient children will not live all their days, especially when they continue to be in the disobedience. So number one reason why some people are killed is disobedience. Bad luck, karma, what goes around comes around. Now, in Buddhism, I'm not a Buddhist. However, I've studied Buddhism. So it breaks down a little bit more in detail the categories of karma and dharma. Dharma is... I think that's your, your um, good luck, kind of, okay? So it's karma and dharma. The, the good that you do comes back and, and karma. You can look up the direct words, but I think dharma is D-H-A-R-M-A, something like that. So the Bible says you reap what you sow. So that's generalized. However, the Bible doesn't necessarily break it down in the way Buddhism breaks it down. So... I can't remember every little detail, but I do remember this part. Karma 
comes back based on who you hurt to. So it's a little bit more deeper than you just reap what you sow. So for example, if I beat up my mom, I'm going to be subjected to a worse karma than I would if I just took someone's wallet and didn't return it, if that makes sense. So theft and stealing brings bad luck or reduces your blessings and things like that. However, I may not get killed one day because I steal a wallet. However, I could have enough bad luck and be killed because I violated my mom or assaulted my mom, even if it's just verbally or emotionally. So what happens before people are killed? Let me go over that. So the journey that they go through before they are killed, and when I say they are killed, it's under the category they are killed. It doesn't necessarily mean they're shot or stabbed or strangled. They weren't victimized by a serial killer. It can be things like sudden accidents. They fall from a building. They're hit by a car or truck. They, it has to do with someone killing them, even if they are not killed on purpose. So if someone's hit by a car or a truck or a bus, they're killed by that car, truck, or bus because man or woman is driving it. So they're still killed. They're not murdered, but they're killed. Now, if someone strangles the person, if they're victimized by a serial killer, they're murdered or in some cases, if it's a political person, they're considered assassinated, okay? So I'm going to start a playlist also about Ocean Gate, Stockton, Rush. And if you are truly empathic and you review these videos, you may come to understand why Stockton Rush was killed. Now, he was supposedly killed in an accident or he was set up. A lot of people don't even believe that it was an accident. They believe that he was murdered along with other people that were with him on this journey. Okay, so I'm gonna create that playlist it's going to be called Ocean Gate and Stockton Rush. So watching those videos helped me kind of think of this concept and how people are killed and the truth of why they are killed. So first of all, I want to point this out. When people are killed and their lives are taken, Usually, a lot of them have already killed someone. And when I say killed someone, I don't mean physically taking their lives. Killing people can be in doing something very horrible to them that's almost irretrievable, irreversible. Okay, so something like helping someone lose their children. Okay, so in that case, we can look at Chad, the, the biological dad that murdered all three of his sons. So the reason I bring that case up is he didn't just murder his sons. He's murdered and killed their mother too, which is their wife. He didn't kill her physically, but he killed her emotionally. You can hear her on the video saying, he took my life. 
Okay, so that's an example of how Chad killed someone other than just physically killing them. He physically killed his own biological three sons. However, he still killed their mother. She's just not physically dead, but there's a part of her that feels like she's been killed. She may even wish she was dead as of right now. Over time, her life spirit will come back to her. So people that are suddenly killed or killed one day, they've already killed someone. A lot of times you will know who they killed or victimized. And they can also do the killing when they're teenagers. Now, what happens with the truth of why they were killed is because the individual, whether they be male or female, had a lot of time to fix what they did. And when I say time, I mean years and years. Like Jeremy Brown in Chicago that just got killed because he was brutally beating this lady in her head for no reason over some food she was ordering. He wasn't even minded in his business. He was killed too because he also has antisocial personality disorder is what I believe. So people that have certain personality disorders, they're also at higher risk of being killed because of the harm that they're continuously doing throughout their life. And they're repeatedly victimizing. They've been warned not to do it, but they continue to do it anyway, despite maybe in some sense, knowing that what they're doing is wrong. So the reason Jeremy Brown got killed also is he didn't care. So his conscience was very low. You can tell by the brutality that he did to this innocent woman that he did not even know over some silly food because she was wanted her food replaced. It actually had nothing to do with him. And that's another reason. A lot of people are killed because they're not minding their business. So that's an example. But going back to what I was saying, so I'm going to give you a clear example of killing someone. Okay. Say it's a daughter. Okay. And she helps in the court of law. She tells some lies. She tells some truth. But there's a lot of lies mixed up in what she's saying. She's a teenager and she helps her mom get her kids taken in court. Okay. Say it's a couple of boys, a couple of girls, whatever. So I'm just, in this case, I'm going to use an example of a daughter that does this to her mom. So she's a teenager when she does it, but the Bible also says that once you become a certain age, you're accountable for your sins. And I think the age is about at least 13, 12. You know the difference between right and wrong. If you're 12 years old and you go burn a baby, you know better. So you're accountable for that sin. And a lot of people that are killed, they never get back right with God. It's not just that they killed someone emotionally and they really harmed someone emotionally and almost permanently damaged someone. They do that and they don't bond back with the Lord. They're not in prayer. They really may have very little conscience about what they did. So they go through life Years move on. So say this one particular daughter, um, say she was abused by the stepdad that her mom married. So she goes through life. She ends up going back to her real dad. I'm just using this as an example. This is some stuff I kind of went through, y'all. So she goes back with her biological father, subjects abuse upon him emotionally, doesn't really have a high regard or a right regard for her dad. A disobedient child does not live all his days or her days. So, you know, a lot of times when people kill other people emotionally, 
by taking their world or their life from them in a physical sense, but not physically taking their life, they continue to stab the person, okay? And when I say stab the person, they're puncturing the room. They've already done this cruel thing of killing you, getting your kids taken, but they're never really in repentance or sorrowful for it. So they go throughout life, they come into their adulthood and they're steadily attacking who they already have killed. And in this case, we'll say a daughter killed her mom. The mom has been killed, but not physically. There's a part of her that feels dead because maybe she's lost these kids. However, she goes into repentance, she's in prayer, and she kind of heals. It's like a scar, but it's been healed. Now, the daughter, on the other hand, she even has an opportunity to fix some of it. You know, she's kind of torturing her mom. However, the daughter can fix it. This is like a story time, y'all. So she's torturing her mom, trying to put all the blame on her mom but she's really killed and violated her mom emotionally by getting her kids taken in a court of law. And she just does nothing. She goes through life, maybe gets on some drugs. She does nothing to fix it. She's even confronted, you know, say the mom is an empath and she wakes up one day to this daughter's abuse and she says, well, you know, I mean, you got my kids taken, my daughter's taken or whatever. Stop torturing me. I mean, call, make the calls and, you know, tell that you lied or you reported the wrong thing. I mean, call the cops. I mean, get a case reopened. Whatever you're saying happened to you by anyone that your mom was around, just report it. And, you know, she's never really sorry in the real sense of the word. However, it's eating the daughter up alive. She grows up. And this is why a lot of people use drugs. This is why they kill themselves by doing drugs. Because it's something that they've done to somebody that's so horrible, that's almost like equivalent to killing them. And they just can't sit right with their conscience. So they use drugs as a band-aid to cover up maybe what they can or can't feel. Sometimes people are using drugs, in my opinion, because of what they can't feel. They know what they did is wrong. They wish they felt a connection to it. They wish they felt sorrowful, but they can't. Or sometimes they're using the drugs because they just keep feeling sorrowful and the drugs is a band-aid so they can stop the pain of what they did to their loved one or someone else's loved one. So the truth of why they're killed is, and if you've had someone killed that's over 21, over 30, this probably will mostly relate to someone that is at least 28 and over. They're a full-blown adult. They've had time to fix it. So the truth of why they're killed is, for one, they've already killed somebody emotionally. Sometimes they've already killed somebody in the physical sense. And they know about it, even if other people don't. And three, it's something that they're holding evil in their soul. Like this can be like a completely evil energy. Like they could be just holding these um, very wicked thoughts. So the universe doesn't like how they think too. A lot of people are killed because basically like they're playing good. But the truth of why somebody is killed is number one. And this is why I said in the beginning, this can be a good video, but sometimes it may bother people. The truth of why they're killed is they're not a good soul. Okay. So their value in this universe doesn't carry much value anymore 
And so they're not needed here because they're not a good soul, but they're also not doing enough to fix it because you can fix a big portion of your soul. And the way this is done is through your connection to the Lord and being more conscious of how you treat people. Being someone that basically cares. So also another reason why they're killed is they meant what they said. And see, that's the difference. I've said some horrible stuff in my life, y'all. I've reacted to psychopaths. I didn't shut some psychopaths down through my words. However, I have learned to word it appropriate. I can tell somebody something without cussing at them, if that makes sense. So I'll give you an example. So this example with the daughter that got her mom's kids taken her assisted in it help we can't blame it all on a child remember there's judges involved there's ex-husbands there's attorneys there's more people involved than just this teenager however i'm trying to think of how to word this um I mean, it's more people involved, right? So, okay, so the a daughter grows up, right? And she tells her mom, that's why you lost your kids, okay? Talking about the daughters or sons that were taken in court. Now, keep in mind, this teenage daughter that was a teenager at the time, she heavily contributed to this due to her lies, her snakish behavior. So when court ends, she says to her mom, and excuse the profanity, but she says to her mom, bitch, that's why you lost your kids. Okay, so this daughter grows up. She has her own kids. Eventually she gets on drugs. And at some point she is unable to take care of her own kids. Say she has about up to six kids. And all of these kids are gradually removed from her over time. So she's not in a position to take care of these kids. So say she says to her mom that, well, that's why you lost your kids. But see, the mom has a tighter relationship with the Lord and is doing more in her life to fix her relationship with the Lord. So the mom at this point also knows what a psychopath and narcissist is. So see, once you know what that is, you can look back and say, I wonder if that daughter that helped me lose my kids in court, I wonder if that was a freaking psychopath. And you remember their eyes, you remember their viciousness, you remember... You, you can't fully ever get out of your mind the teenager standing there saying, bitch, that's why you lost your kids. You almost have what you call flashbacks. This is a form of post-traumatic stress disorder. So this same teenage daughter grows up and she's having a phone conversation with her mom. Because at this point, you're in no contact with this freaking daughter. And the reason you stay in no contact with these freaking people, even if they're your blood relative, once they grow up, so you can keep your ass out of the penitentiary. Because this is somebody that you could get into it with real bad because they're so goddamn evil and wicked and you kill their ass. However, that ain't the way the Lord wants you to go. See, because the Lord says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So it ain't your position to kill nobody. One of the Ten Commandments says, thou shall not kill. So that's the difference between you and that psychopath and narcissist. So this daughter grows up and she's telling her mom over the phone. Because she's already said 
Many, many years ago, bitch, that's why you lost your kids. The day she made her mom lose her kids, this is what she says to her own mom, okay? And she grows up and continues the hate. So she's telling her mom over the phone, this is a real life story, y'all, this, this actually happened. So she's telling her mom over the phone, well, that's why you lost your kids. Now keep in mind, the mom has been blessed with more children. So this wasn't the end of the road for this particular mom. She was blessed with more children that she did continue to raise their entire life. So this daughter that grows up is on the phone telling her mom, that's why you lost your kids. However, this time she's not calling her mom the B word like she did when she was a teenager. However, remember what I said earlier, putting that knife in you. And this also shows that this psychopathic daughter meant that shit. And this is the truth of why they are killed. I'm, this is going to be really interesting. It means that she fucking meant that shit. It also means that in no way was she in any real repentance with the Lord. Because see, when somebody does something like this to you, for example, the mom that this happened to, you got to be in repentance and you got to build a relationship and you are going to have to look at the principles that Jesus Christ taught in any other son of God or prophets that are in any religious books. You're going to have to look at especially the principles of Jesus Christ to be able to survive this. And what did Jesus Christ teach? Kindness, forgiveness, not treating them in the real way that they treated you. So for example, this mom never tried to get this woman kids taken or her daughter, because at this point, this daughter is a woman, okay? And it is just this woman, because what type of person as a teenager helps get their mom kids taken? And of course, we can say, okay, the, the stepdad was manipulative. The stepdad manipulated this teenage child to do this, which was the mom's husband at the time. However, the truth of why people are killed is they grow up. And see, once you become a woman or a man, you're accountable for what the hell you did to people when you was a teenager and when you're an adult. And what you don't want to do is make it worse for yourself and you end up getting killed in some kind of way. And when I say getting killed and the truth of why they are killed is they are physically killed. It's a physical death. So this daughter says this over the phone, except this time she doesn't call her mom a bitch, but she reminds her mom that she lost those kids because at this point she's on drugs. She wants to torture her mom. She wants to kill her mom more. She's actually mad because her mom ain't dead for real. She tried to kill her, but because of the Lord, it just didn't work. And that's the truth of why they are killed because they can do what they want to do to you, but they won't necessarily win the situation. They won't win it because the Lord has the final say. So they're only able to kill some of you, but they won't have the true ability to fully just take you out of here in the real sense of the word. Someone can take your life or do something so horrible to you where you have a nervous breakdown, but you still enter heaven. So see, the narcissist and psychopath doesn't win. So... During this phone call, she tells her mom, and she's grown up now, and she tells her mom, that's why you lost your kids. But see, the mom has woke up to her. So the mom, and I've been good with this in my life, y'all. And 
you can look at it whatever way you want to look at it. But one of the things I don't regret is telling the psychopath the truth in a safe environment. That's where my power came in, not doing it through profanity. So the mom tells her adult daughter, this adult daughter that can't stay off drugs, can't deal with her own conscience. And at this point, she's harmed many other supplies too. It's taken advantage of them, not been grateful. I would say this psychopathic daughter, her dad's a psychopath too, but she didn't treat her, her father very well. And the Bible doesn't say, when it says honor thy mother and father, it doesn't say, well, if your dad's a psychopath, or your mom's a psychopath, you have the right to abuse your parents. It doesn't say that it gives you no pass to not honor your mother and father. You're not supposed to hold hatred in your heart and no daughter or son is put here to abuse their parents, even if their parents are a psychopath. I think in those cases, the best thing to do would be to not even deal with your parent if you're going to subject abuse upon your parents. So during this conversation, she says this. So guess what the mom says to the adult daughter? When the daughter says, well, that's why you lost your kids. Now keep in mind, she knows that she contributed to her mom losing her kids when she was a teenager. So the mom says to the psychopathic daughter or narcissistic daughter, whatever you want to call her, she says, but you know what? You don't have any of yours. I may have lost my daughters. I may have lost my sons or whatever I lost. However, dear heart, baby girl, or whatever you want to say, have you noticed that you don't have any of your children? Because see what's happening now in the universe, in this situation, this real life situation the Lord wants this daughter to see that the same energy you put out can come back. And just like you can kill your mom or almost like kill her spirit, your spirit's being killed in the same way. Because remember, the mom lost some of her kids. She was granted more kids. This daughter that's acting like she has psychopathic traits She's lost them all. They're all staying with grandpa and dad at this point. So the psychopathic and narcissistic daughter says, hmm, you just crazy. It ends there. Eventually she's going to go no contact because this mom is no longer going to be a supply source in any way. Because this mom now knows what a psychopath and a narcissist is. And so then some years go by. I mean, this, this adult daughter has all this time to fix their issues, to, to do something in the karma world and for the Lord to just do something better. So this particular adult daughter, she does. She ends up getting killed physically. She doesn't live past... 35. At 35, around that age or younger, she was cut off. She could have been in her late 20s, early 30s. Her life was suddenly ended. She was killed. So in this case, the truth of why she was killed is because, for one, she had already killed. She just hadn't done it physically, but she did kill her mom. When her mom lost her siblings and her kids, her mom, in some sense, just like Chad's wife said, when he killed their sons in Ohio, the wife said, he took my life. So see, it's the same feeling. I can relate to how that comes out and how that feels. So the truth of why someone is killed is 
what goes around comes around. It just has to come back around. But they refused. The time that they were given in the universe, they refused to do anything better in the karma world to make that situation better, even though they had been warned that they were supposed to do so. And the reason the person had been warned is because the empathic person that stood up to them actually told them exactly what they were supposed to do. And they refused. They were told what to do. So that's the truth of why they were killed. They were told what to do. And even though the individual was told what to do, which is nothing but that person that they've harmed, sending them a message from the Lord on what to do. And they refused to do it. So you will reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. And the truth of why someone is suddenly killed is because they've already killed someone. And this person that they killed emotionally survived it. Because while they were killed, or feeling like they were killed, they were continuing in prayer. And the Lord says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Can't nobody touch you here on this earth because the Lord will have the final say each and every time. Never forget that, y'all.